is good you it's your boy time back here with another video and in this video today guys we're going to be building the best squad in the entire game including gambling cards but not including 100 overalls why am i doing this well tomorrow we'll have another video that does just include uh free cards or cards that uh, are in the player market it's just so tough because like for example is this card right here considered gambling or not gambling? Like, that, 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 it's just so stinking hard when we talk about gambling compared to non-gambling. So, I want to try to do a little bit of both. There's just so many different cards in the game, and it's kind of hard to separate them. So, today, going to be building the best squad that does not include 100 overall cards. We're going to start off at the point guard position. Dark Matter Ben Simmons. Look, I don't have Ben Simmons. I'll never get Ben Simmons or play with the card, but it's it's relatively simple to understand. If you have a shooting guard that can make some plays, the best point guard to run alongside that shooting guard is Ben Simmons. He's 6'10", defensively going to be off the charts good. He can knock down shots. I mean, again, defensively, that's going to be Ben Simmons' name of the game. Like, I mean, honestly, you want to switch all screens, Ben Simmons fits that meta. Obviously, on the offensive end of the court, I don't think Ben Simmons is the best offensive player. I'd be I'd be a fool to kind of say that. But I, I, as far as, you know, seeing the whole picture, as far as uh, at least respecting what Ben Simmons can do, I do believe he is one of our best cards in the entire game, and especially at that point guard position. At the shooting guard position, Glenn Rice. Not to spoil the video tomorrow, but he's going to be featured tomorrow as well. Like, I mean, there really is no ifs, ands, or buts about it. Glenn Rice, still to this day, in my opinion, the best card in the game. Look, he's 6'8". He's got the Patty Mills base on very quick. He's basically impossible to guard, and you guys can say I'm gassing it, but I truly do believe that. And again, if you have Ben Simmons, or even, you know, let's say, uh, I'm, I'm just going to plug in my 11, or my 12 spot here. If you have Clyde Drexler, I think Clyde is a perfect guy to run alongside a Glenn Rice. So, just kind of an alternative to already give you guys. If you don't have Ben Simmons, and you have Clyde, that's fine. Just run Clyde next to Glenn, and you will have a lot of success with that backcourt duo. And honestly, that's a backcourt duo that I personally run right now is Clyde with Mr. Glenn. But Glenn is, I mean, he can fit whatever roster. I mean, honestly, 6'8". If you want him to run him as your, you know, on-ball defender, he can even do that. At this small four position, this one might surprise some people. I'm plugging in Scottie Pippen. Look, I'm a bigger fan of Scottie Pippen than a lot of people, but I think it comes down to this. The easiness of Scottie Pippen to use. Like, he green shots at a very high level. He has a great pro two leaner. Uh, he's 6'8", can get you paint stops, can be, a, you know, the best on-ball defender in the game. Like, there's just, what what is there not to like about Scottie Pippen? Again, I use this reference quite a bit, but it's the truth. Like, if my fiance... Ned doesn't play this game. If she was to pick up the sticks today, pick up the controller today, and she had Scottie Pippen, I bet she'd be able to green some shots with him because his release is so easy to time and easy to green. Now, it's obviously on very quick, so, you know, it's going to be sped up a little bit. But just the ease of using Scottie Pippen, I do think is super important and is just noteworthy. Again, you don't need him to be a primary bundler if you have Glenn Rice on the court. But again, if you're going to run a guy like Ben Simmons, you do need Scottie Pippen to be able to get you that occasional, uh, you know, uh, secondary bundler type bucket. At my power four position, a card everybody should be running if they got him. Dark Matter Dikembe Mutombo. Salary cap Dikembe is so good. If you went for salary cap this season, you got so rewarded. And that's one... I'm not saying the game's good. I'm not saying it's perfect. But the one thing I like about 2K right now is they're rewarding us with some good rewards. Like, they are. You look at the level 40s the past couple of seasons. SJ, the best point guard in the game, maybe outside of Ben Simmons. You look at even the mode rewards, like, I, I, I'm probably going to plug in some more of them. Salary cap, obviously, Dikembe Mutombo is fantastic. He should be fantastic. You know what? You got to play dang near, what, 50 games to get Dikembe over, over uh, obviously, the course of the, the entire season. He should be good. He is. Pro 2 leaner. Great catch-shoot release. Obviously, defensively, you know Dikembe Mutombo is always going to be the best. If you're not a fan of Dikembe Mutombo, man, go watch the Dikembe Mutombo gameplay I did. And maybe after watching that, you'll be a fan. The card is absolutely, absolutely, absolutely incredible. A shoe-in at the power forward position. At the starting center, I don't really have a choice. Victor Wembanyama. Look, it, it's 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 a pain that Wemby uh, has to be included there, but I'm going to give you a substitute right here in my 13th spot, Artis. Look, Artis is 95% of what Victor Wembanyama is, and I'm not saying that Artis is quite as good because he's not. Victor Wembanyama is the overall better card, and I'd be a fool if I uh, it, it, you know if I if I if I said anything different. But you know, being realistic with you guys. 
Webby's fantastic. He's 7'4". He's got a great release. He greens the most ridiculous, crazy shots. And the best part about him is his defense. I mean, I, I, I wish that's one card I really wish I had. Victor Wembanyama. Obviously, I wasn't opening any packs back then. I still very, you know, haven't opened too many uh, of recent. But Wemby... If there is a case for the best card in the game, he's close to being as good as Glenn Rice. At my backup point guard position, another free card, Shea Gilgis Alexander. So so far in the in the squad, we, we we've got six of our top or six of our first players. Glenn, you can get for free. Dikembe could get for free. SJ, you can get for free. And so even though a lot of these cards are behind gambling, it ruins the game mode, all those things, you can still, you know, get so many of the absolutely elite cards for absolutely free. And even, or even the Pro Pass SGA, free SGA, it doesn't matter. To me, like SGA is SGA. Pro Pass SGA obviously is slightly better than the free SGA. But both cards would be my backup point guard here. I think SGA is absolutely fantastic. To me, why is SGA so good? His movement's obviously good. He's 6'6", which means D defensively he's going to compete but the best part about SGA kind of similar to Scottie Pippen is I think he's relatively easy to use and why I think it's because of his release like if SGA didn't have as good of a release as he did he wouldn't be nearly as high as he is to me SGA deserves the ultimate respect at my backup shooting guard position Julius Serving's Dark Matter now look I was fortunate enough to get him on the No Money Spent Squad Series. So fortunate. I mean, Julius Irving is so absolutely elite. If you're yourself, and let's say you got Dr. J and don't have Glenn Rice, that's okay. Because Dr. J, he's not as good as Glenn. Not going to sit here and act like it. But at the shooting guard position, he's your next best option. 6'7", going to play fantastic defense. Attack the rim is, you know, attacking the rim is going to be off the charts good. And don't sleep on the defense of Dr. J. Again, 6'7", he can be your primary on-ball defender. But man, oh man, Julius Irving is a problem in my team. Back up small four position. We're going to plug in Kawhi Leonard. No, he's only 6'7". You guys might say he's a little undersized, but I still think he is, you know, one of the top small forwards in the entire game. And do I think height's important? Yes, but I think it's more important just to not have a really small guy on the court. Like the difference between 6'7 and 6'9 to me on the court right now, it does matter, but I don't think it's like a make or break situation. And I think what Kawhi gives you on the offensive end of the court definitely is enough to add him to the squad. I got Kawhi on my main squad and I have absolutely love the card a bucket getter so easy to time easy to green his release defensively might be one of the best on ball defenders in the entire game do i wish he was a little bit taller sure absolutely i think you know everybody would want that but to say Kawhi is not one of the best small forwards in the game is just flat out wrong at my back up power forward position here's where things get interesting okay and, and here's where things get really interesting because it's like do i plug in kevin McHale? and i want to show you guys the, the the entire power forge right now because it's like do i plug in kevin McHale or not at the time i'm recording this i actually haven't used kevin McHale, and so it, it's kind of tough i can't i can't i want to plug in kevin McHale, but i simply can't chris taps porzingis absolutely deserves that power forward spot and then at the center spot i'm just gonna plug in mark eaton because i think those two guys have to be plugged into the squad i think you know it, it's a must have situation the thing is this chris Stapps, whether you like him more than wemby whether you like him more than dikembe he's one of the top bigs in the game mark eaton can easily be replaced for artist gilbert so don't think if you have Mark Eaton, it's like the, the 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 end of the world. It's not. It is okay. If you don't have Mark Eaton, you are absolutely just fine. Just plug in Artis Gilmore. He's going to give you 95% of Mark Eaton. But honestly, when I've played against these guys, KP, Wemby, Mark Eaton, to be honest, I've had some troubles. And, and I'm not trying to sit here and hype up these cards or guess these cards for no reason. That's just the truth of the situation. When I've played against KP, Wemby, and Mark Eaton, they have given me some absolute problems. Now, here's the deal with this entire squad. 13-man squad. The difference between a guy like Ben Simmons and Clyde is so small. The difference between even a guy like Kawhi Leonard and let's say, I'm just going to throw out a name, Amari Stoudemire, is so small. The big difference in squads is this. Number one, do you have Glenn Rice? If you got Glenn Rice, you got one of the best cards in the game, and, and, and that's about as important as, as, as anything else. Number two, do you have the do you have the dominant bigs? If you have Dikembe Mutombo, super important right now. If you have Artis Gilmore, obviously can help. But like Wemby, KP, Markeen right now are kind of dominating the game. Obviously, 100 overall, Yao, if I was including 100 overalls in this video, would be a shoe-in right there. But 
I don't like including 100 overalls for a reason. Like to me, it's it's like not even fair to, to include them in these types of videos. So that's where I'm at uh, today, guys. I don't know. You guys can let me know your thoughts on this squad down below in the comments. Don't think you got to get these cards again. I'm going to give you guys a, uh, a, a squad builder tomorrow that's not behind gambling, which I am super excited about. But at this stage, it, it, it would be foolish of me to not realize a lot of people do have these top level cards. Wemby, Kawhi, Dr. J. So, I mean, if you have those guys, I want you to realize like they're that good and you can use them and have a ton of success with them. Initially, when I went to do this video, I was like, do I want to do gambling cards? Do I not want to? And I was like, you know what? I think the best situation is to do both. Do one top squad of gambling cards including gambling cards and then give you guys a squad that you know what if you don't want to gamble and, and and that's the way you are approaching things what is the best squad you can create with that in mind so that was kind of you know what i was thinking during uh making this video but you guys can let me know your thoughts on this down below in the comments drop a like on it subscribe if you're doing it as always man i love you guys have a blessed day